Thank you for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do another free fall type problem. So our problem for today looks like this. A ball is thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second and allowed to come straight back down. How long was the ball in the air? For a problem like this, it might be a, a helpful idea to draw a picture. Since we are working with free fall, um, our object is going to go straight up and then come straight back down. And there's really two ways to solve for this problem. And I'm going to show you both ways. To begin this problem, and like most physics problems, we should start by listing our knowns and our unknowns. So we see that the ball is thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. So that's going to be our VI. It's allowed to come straight back down. We want to know how long was the ball in the air. So obviously our unknown here is how long did it take. Okay. We also know that our acceleration in this problem is going to be that due to gravity, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so there's this missing variable that really isn't given in the problem. And here's where I say that there's two ways to solve this. One method is understanding the concept that however long it takes the ball to go up the path is the same amount of time for it to come back down. And one thing that we know at the top of the path, so once the ball gets up to here, okay, so it's traveling up, it has to stop before it can come back down. And so one method is setting VF at the top here at zero meters per second because the ball has to stop before it can come back down. And so when you solve for the time in that method, once you get the time, you have to end up doubling the time because the concept, the amount of time it takes to go up is the same amount of time it takes to come back down. So let's go ahead and solve for that method. VF is zero. So when we take a look at our knowns and our unknowns, the only thing that's not listed at all, the only thing that it didn't tell us about at all, was the height or the distance that is traveled. So when we take a look at our equations, we're going to find the equation that doesn't have delta y in it. So it turns out that the only equation that doesn't have delta y is this one. So vf equals vi plus at. Well, in our, pro in our knowns and unknowns, our vf is 0, vi was 12, plus a times t. A lot of students make a mistake here, and they try to combine unlike terms. They try to combine this 12 with this negative 9.8 times t. Just make sure you're avoiding doing that. Um, this 12 does not have a t attached to it, so you can't add it to the negative 9.8. So our only first step here is to subtract 12. So negative 12 is going to equal negative 9.8 times t. We'll get t all by itself by dividing by negative 9.8. We end up with an answer of 1.22 seconds. Now remember that 1.22 seconds is how long it takes just to go up. So we need to double it for the entire amount of time. So we end up with a final answer of 2.44 seconds. So that's one method of solving this problem is using that concept that the ball has to stop at the top before coming down. Now, the other method is that we know that acceleration due to gravity is constant. So if the ball initially starts at 12 meters per second, by the time that it comes back down to its original position, that velocity is going to be the same, but just in a negative direction. It's a downward direction. So we could set VF to negative 12, and we could redo this problem with VF being negative 12. And we will see that we get the same exact answer using the same exact equation. So in this case, negative 12 is going to equal 12 plus negative 9.8 times T. Once again, we'll have to subtract 12 
on both sides. So we'll get negative 24 equals 9.8 times the time. Once we divide by negative 9.8 here, since this takes into account the entire trip up and down, we don't have to double it this time. And we get an answer of 2.44 seconds. All right, so this is a uh, generally a tricky problem. Um, and I think part of it is because there are two different ways to solve it. So I hope that this video lesson has been helpful uh, in helping you solve your own physics problem.